David Ocho for Sun City. Yeah. I'm wearing a dose of long for so. Um, and Joe Coppage for another token as trustee of the Gordon B. Hansen Trust Fund. We're defendants, but I guess we'll be over here. I guess it's okay. You can stand wherever you'd like because we've kind of got a lot of different different procedural postures. Okay, I do appreciate one of the council needs to be somewhere else. As you can appreciate, I have to wait till I finish with my 9 o'clock and have to make sure that's what happens when I get counsel all, all here on time and things. And we try and move it as quickly as possible, but we want to make sure everyone has a full opportunity to be heard. Okay, so um, we've got two different things going on here. First is i got to check on a couple of different things. This was the continued because you all did some... Well, we corrected the caption line, I believe, and there was a stick to that effect. Okay, but the documents I currently have don't necessarily have the correct caption, so we're... Because the underlying pleadings were filed before the caption was corrected. That's correct, Your Honor. So we're just calling it the way it was, and you have the correct caption now. Okay, so... For today's, the reason why I'm saying for today's purposes is because there's a lot of pleadings that have gone back and forth in this case. In fact, something was even filed yesterday. But for today's purposes, we have the motions that, motion for summary judgment, the joinder there too, and then the status check pursuant to the trial orders, what the court shows us on for today. Correct? Because there's a different nation stars motion for summary judgment is not on for today. We show that's not on until April. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Yes. Okay. That's correct. That's what I should. I just want to make sure. Okay, and then replies to the counterclaims. So I have Sun City Anthem's motion for summary judgment. I have Nation Star's joinder, which has some substance to it as it relates there too. And we'll do the status check. So um, initially the court, so let me get this other point of clarification since I don't have this in open court. Initially this was granted by the court court as unopposed because there was no timely opposition filed. Because the court looks at the record and if there's no timely opposition filed, then things get taken care of. What the court understands is, although nobody told the court, you all had some agreement that an opposition could be filed late. Is that correct? And so that at this juncture, the parties are requesting that the court vacate its prior minute order granting the motion as being unopposed and hear this motion on its merits today? Is that the, all the parties' understanding? That is correct, Your too? Honor. We did grant an extension to the, the opposition. Um, I actually believe the court was informed because I think we contacted the court prior to that to move the hearing, and I thought an extension was part of that communication from opposing counsel. Um, but obviously you can get no. that. So As you know, it needs counsel. Please read the rules. The rules require what? In writing. All parties if you're requesting any extension and must get leave of court. So no, the court was not informed. The court would not be doing a minute order and spending the time going through the entire case and doing a minute order if it had been informed. If you want something changed, stipulation, please read the EDCR. My apologies, Your Honor. I granted opposing counsel the extension. So it needs to be memorialized in a written stipulation submitted to the court signed by all parties, please. Okay? more than 24 hours in advance of any hearing. The ECR is very clear on that. Thank you. So, is it the request of the parties that the court vacate its prior minute order relating to granting it pursuant to EDCR 2.20 and the joinder thereto and hear this case a motion for summary judgment on the merits? We have no opposition to that on behalf of Nation Star. We weren't a part of the communications with the extension, but that said, we have no issue with vacating the prior ruling granting it up, or yes, granting is unopposed. Which in and of itself is a challenge because you have to have all parties agree with any stipulation. But I haven't heard from the other two parties since that's what you want me to do. Um, Presumably you do because you're the person who didn't file the I did not, Your And in all candor, Your Honor, just so the court understands what I did, and it's my mistake, and I'll take full responsibility for it, is I called your, uh, your clerk's office. I asked if you could move the hearing to the same date as the status check. And I was t told. They just to send a letter requesting that move. I assumed that I, 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 my fault. I, I, did, I just assumed incorrectly on that it, it did not need to advise the court. I understand the rule. I'm a rule, I'm a rule guy, Your Honor. I don't. Need, I, I understand the rule. It's my fault. It's not Castle's fault. It's my fault. So I, I, but yes, we want to have the matter heard on this marriage, Your Honor. Yes, I agree, Your Honor. It should be heard on the marriage. Okay, go ahead. This and counsel, a, just like Mr. Hong, I didn't hear from you, but you didn't seem like you had an issue. 
And if you have another hearing and you don't have a position in this, it's up, are you wanting uh, to stay or you just want to do the status check? Because I can do the status check first if that's the only portion you're here for. Is that what's the only portion you're here for? Do the parties mind if I do the status check portion to the extent that I may need to vacate it, depending on rulings on the motion for summary judgment, since we've got counsel needs to go to another hearing in federal court? Are you all okay with that part? That's fine. No, yes. that's fine. Okay, and then someone will notify Mr. Hong if it gets modified afterwards? Yes. Does yes, that work? Is that yes, what you're sir. requesting? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so let's do that part first. Okay. Sorry, folks. It's going to make more sense. Um, <laughs> Mr. Hong doesn't have a position on the summary judgment. Let's get that taken care of. Okay, it's the status check portion. Sorry, Madam Court Recorder and Madam Clerk, but I just changed that up a little bit. So the status check is pursuant to the trial order of September 13th, 2018. You're on the five-week stack bench trial, May 28th. Calendar call, currently May 21st. Pre-trial conference, April 25th. Um, and so, subject to any pending motions for summary judgment either being heard today, and the court has to check on whether I can even hear the one on the 23rd, but any pending motions for summary judgment that may otherwise change the nature of the case. How many days for trial? I'm going to just go from left to right and ask each of the four of you in no particular order. I would say two or three more. Okay. I would agree, Your Honor. I agree. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Anything special? Any audiovisuals? <coughs> no? No audiovisuals from Nation Star? Are you sure? Um, we'd like to use Elmo, but that's. No, I mean, you know, I mean, no audiovisual appearances? You're not having. No, Your Honor. Okay. So everyone's going to be here live? No deposition? People appearing by deposition, people appearing by audiovisual, anything unique? Nothing unique from us. Okay, so all live witnesses? Okay. Um, two to three, uh, bench trial. Anything else unique about this case? Okay. <coughs> Presumably you all have done whatever you needed to do with regards to your mediations, your settlement conferences, anything you've chosen to do in this case, right? So it's, it's a 2015 case consolidated with 2016 case, yes? Correct. That's been where it needed to be. Is that right? From all parties? Yes, yes, sure. yes, 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 and yes. Okay. Um, the court did not see, but let me make sure because in all these cases there's sometimes other unique aspects. Is there anything pending in any other? Well, I'm just going to say, is there anything pending elsewhere? I'll phrase it that way because I better admit it. Meaning, any administrative matters that the court needs to be aware of, any bankruptcies, any other federal cases that may impact this, any other appellate proceedings, any anything? Nations are not aware of anything else. No, they're not. You understand the whole panoply of what I'm talking about. Yes. Everything from foreclosure mediations no, to hearings in front of the real estate board to bankruptcy proceedings to other federal proceedings to state proceedings to anything, anything, anything? No, no, the no. The issue is not aware of anything. Not aware? Okay. So, court's got full jurisdiction of whatever is left at the time of trial. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Um, so, two to three days and we're on that stack. Okay. Um, we're going to be one of the older cases on that stack. You know, we, can, uh, we always can... Uh, we always can make room, so it always works out well. Okay, anything else the court needs to know for the status check purposes? Okay, so anyone who does not have a position with relationship to the underlying motion or joinder on for today, if they wish to leave, they're more than welcome to leave. If they wish to stay, they're more than welcome to stay. A question, Your Honor, before I leave, I thank sure. you very much. Would the court be inclined to allow my client to orally join in on the motion? Um... I don't know. Am I going to have an objection from anyone on an oral joinder here at the day of the time of the hearing at a continued hearing day? I, I would, Your Honor. I guess I'm not sure what, what he would. Well, then, if I have an objection, then I have an objection. Yeah. Okay. So, are you requesting that the court rule on your potential oral joinder? You've heard that there's an objection, or is that just a question of a question? I just need to know do I ma am I making a ruling? <coughs> is that a true request for an oral it, it, joinder? It, it is a true request, Your Honor. I, I believe the, uh, my party is interested in. Well, then are you staying for the whole hearing? Well, yeah. If, if the court is going to grant my uh, motion for oral joinder. Well, then, well, I can't. Plaintiff gets to go first on their motion before right. I'm going to address anything right, on the right. joinder stuff. I'm right. trying to just be cognizant that you mentioned that you had a federal appearance. Right, right. I'm not going to go segue into right, procedural right. aspects that I'll, I'll wouldn't give plaintiff the opportunity. I don't mean plaintiff, excuse me. I mean the movement. I just right. misspoke when I said plaintiff. Right. But the <coughs> movement has an opportunity to go first sure. and set forth their arguments. And then I would deal with anybody who has a filed joinder. Okay. Then I would deal with anybody else's requests. Okay. And then I would let plaintiff address both procedural and substantive so that I handle it in a manner that 
everybody has an opportunity as they file their pleadings, right, to do it. So I can't address your question right now. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. But you heard that you're going to have an objection. Right. Okay. So I'm not going into procedural substance right now. We're going to circle back. You've been waiting to hear. I have one thing on, on the uh, statute on it in sure. terms of, I guess it's a five week stack of even 28. Is that correct, Your Honor? Five week. The stack that you are on, and the court's not going to discuss specific dates because those get discussed at the time of the pretrial conference. We have a five week stack, and everybody has to make sure that you know they're available. The five week stack. Um, and the five week stack does start May 28th. It goes through June 28th, but this particular stack, because of the state bar conference, Court's accommodating parties, and so the stack technically is going to end on June 26th rather than June 28th because realizing lots of people go to the state bar conference. And I'm sure you all can appreciate that that's going to be the stack. The court may not want to know now, but I was going to advise the court. I have a, a way to go to out of, out of state the week of that 28th, that, that entire week. There's a lot to go to court Well, that will all be dealt with at the time of the pretrial conference. Do you realize you're the age of this case? This case will be going whatever is left because of the age of this case. I'm sure you're all very, very familiar with EDCR 1.90. I'm sure you're very, very familiar with the history of this case and the various extensions. I'm sure you're very, very familiar with the changes to the Nevada Rules of Civil Procedure, the fact that all those changes and what is necessary for the courts to do and what they're directed to do within those time periods. So this case will be going. I'm sure you all will coordinate among yourselves to make sure you have times and there's some preferentials on that. It overlaps with my CD stack and there's med mouth. So you can easily check on the system to do those, okay? But your two or three days, we can always <coughs> find some room to get you fit in. Okay, I appreciate it. Council, you're the movement. Go ahead, yes. it's your motion for summary judgment. Uh, this is a August 2014 foreclosure sale, Your Honor. Um, Nona Tobin and her sales agent were in contact with Red Rock Financial the Collection Company for about a two year period that this foreclosure sale um, took place. Um, they were in communication because they were attempting to short sale the home. Um, throughout that two year period, there was no allegation to Red Rock that a payment had been misapplied. After the foreclosure sale, as part of this cross claim, the allegation is that uh, Nona Toman's last payment um, for July 2012 <coughs> assessments was untimely applied. That application then affected Red Rock's ledgers, what their, the allegation is their ledgers were incorrect. That information is then transferred to the notices. The notices were therefore incorrect, and so therefore there was an issue that impacted the foreclosure sale. Mm -hmm. However, that allegation in the cross claim is contradicted by Nona Tobin's own letter to Red Rock that's in Red Rock's foreclosure file that's dated October of 2012. Um, it's later in October, so by October 1st, you have another assessment owing to the HOA. In addition to that, the July assessment not being paid, not, not having been paid, uh, Red Rock then adds late fees, and that's all in their uh, ledger. So her own letter indicates that, um, I, it basically says, I'm sorry, here's my payment, it's two months late. Um, for whatever reasons, I'm just now sending it. So her allegation in the cross claim that it was not timely applied is contradicted by her own letter dated October, and therefore the Red, Red Rocks letters actually are correct <coughs> to those amounts, and then there's no issues with the notices. Um, the, there is a notice of default that gets rescinded, however, uh, the eight, Red Rock uh, records a new notice of default. The notice of sale references that second notice of default. So there are no issues with the sale, Your Honor. Um, based on that, we believe you should grant our motion for summary judgment. Um, and I'll, I'll let um, opposing counsel address her joinder. Okay. Counsel for Nation Star. We filed a joinder um, just as a precautionary measure. We believe that there are no notice issues and that at least under 116, the sale was properly conducted to the extent it was a sub-priority sale because we do have a mild power tender that I'm not going to go into at this point, but we'll discuss <coughs> when we get to our motion for summary judgment. Uh, but that was the reason we joined and again, we see no notice issues, no issues with the accounting. 
uh, with respect to the cell being a sub-party cell. Okay. Um, Council. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, so I got to deal with your procedural first, guy. Yes. Uh, or a motion to join in on the HOA's motion for summary judgment. My okay. clients would be the Stokes, uh, F. Bonron, and Principal Young. With regards to your oral motion, was there any reason why you could not have filed a written motion? I mean, is there any yeah. good cause that the court should be taking into account? Uh, no, other than, <coughs> other than work. <coughs> I, I, should, I should have filed a joint resolution. So, counsel for plaintiff? I'm not, sorry, not counsel plaintiff. for, uh, I misspoke. I'm so used to looking at that table. So, counsel <coughs> for, you are the counter. We're the owner, I guess. It's, it's well, I'm not going to phrase it that way. I'm going to put it within its captioning. And I've got, since these pleadings don't have the correct captioning, um, I'm trying to find one that actually has your correct captioning. I, I, I'm not certain, but I, I believe it should be. The show is may have. We did, we did not change it until the stick was entered, but I think the show yeah. may have it. Our motion predates it, but our reply may have it, Your Honor. That's what I was trying to find. That's why you probably started mm -hmm. thinking through. So, cross defendants. Cross. Cross claimant is so the role of cross claimants. Cross defendant Sun City anthems against cross claimant Norma Tobin, individual and trustee for the Gordon B. Hanson Trust, correct? That's correct. I just know <coughs> our, our reply, I don't think, is accurate. Our reply is not accurate. I was taking off page two of your reply. Is that not your counter defendants? I believe some of those entries may have been taken out of the caption. Okay, so let's go. We'll just say no to token, okay, in the roles which are subject to the pending motion today. Does that work for you, counsel? That's fine, Your Honor. Perfect. Okay, go ahead. So am I still objecting to his oral joinder? Or if you'd like to do that one procedurally first, I can rule on that first. Your Honor, it's like, just, just not timely, Your Honor, in terms of that, and, and, and so I, I would object on that basis, Your Honor. Okay. <coughs> and what prejudice would your client have? I guess, Your Honor, if, if we had known that, that they were going to join in the, the, the motion, we may have made an additional argument. I can't think now what it might have been, but I mean, we, we may have done that, Your Honor. Okay. Um, the court is going to deny the request for an oral drawing, but <coughs> purely on a procedural basis. The court takes no basis with regards to any potential merits because the court doesn't even feel it should reach the merits because it's in the midst of a hearing. It's also in the midst of a continued hearing. Right, right, so right, you really right. would have had even potentially that extra option. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you need you, to go, right. feel free. You don't need to stay. If you wish to stay, you're more than welcome to stay. Okay. So, counsel, substantively, go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. Um, this is somewhat a, a unique HOA, I guess, lender foreclosure case because the, the owner, uh, the Gordon B. Hanson Trust, is involved in the case, Your Honor. And as, as counsel mentioned, they knew that Ms. Tobin, as a trustee, was trying to do a short sale of property. There is one comment about... Uh, in the cross claim in terms of when she uh, paid the then pending HOA dues and when she saw documents produced in the case she realized that it refreshed her memory and that, and that she did send it back in October but, but that does not eliminate their obligation to do certain things Your Honor and, and so if you think if in terms of this they still have certain requirements to provide notice in this case they did not do certain things they did not provide a notice uh, of the schedule of fees that were going to be charged. They did not offer a payment plan. They did not uh, offer Ms. Tobin as the trustee a chance to appeal for the board of itself. And so to say that they follow all the rules is, in terms of notice, that's not correct, Your Honor. But really, the, the, key, is, the key, I think, Your Honor, is that if we go to the, the Nation Star case, that I think is, is the case that, that helps us in this, this matter. And the and law the clarity is just. You might want to pop a site on because the term Nation Star case these days is, uh, well, several dozen. It's the Nation Star at, at 133 uh, Nevada Best Reporter sure. 91. It is, um, I think, the 2017 case, Your Honor. In any event, the court said when you have a, a wide disparity between the value of the property and the foreclosure sale price, 
you don't have to have, I mean, at that point in time, you have slight additional evidence mm -hmm. of an unfairness or an irregularity can set aside the foreclosure sale. And so, what do you have in this case? And again, I mentioned that they, they didn't comply with the those requirements itself. But if you look at, at our exhibit, Your Honor, in see number 14, it is a document that's produced at it's Tobin 000080. And it shows that at this time, it shows that the sale as of the property was sold on August 15, 2014. And in this one, it shows that the the sale, the trustee sale was canceled, Your Honor. And so what we have in this case is we have a we have an owner who is trying to conduct a a uh, short sale on the property. We have a no sale that is canceled, Your Honor, without notice to her, and then the sale takes place. That smacks of fairness. At the very least, Your Honor, we have an issue of fact of whether or not the the sale was canceled or the no sale was canceled, which prohibits this court from granting summary judgment, Your Honor. And if you need a moment to look, look at that, you can see that it's it's been it was canceled. I believe it was canceled on 5-15-2014. The sale took place uh, August 15, 2014, Your Honor. And that's the screenshot from the uh, Ombudsman's uh, Compliance Review Screen. Okay. That's why I have your honor. No Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll first address the, uh, the payment plan and hearing before the board. Um, once it's sent to collections, Your Honor, there's no requirement that the board has to have a hearing. They did notice a hearing about um, canceling membership, but that's different. It has to go to assessment, so there was actually a hearing about potentially canceling membership uh, access to the facilities for not paying assessments, and there, I believe there was a hearing on that. Um, there were communications throughout the entire process with Red Rock, the agent for the HOA, regarding payments, her October letter says I'm not paying anymore, but the, the HOA still works with her because they're requiring, they're requesting a short sale and they discuss a waiver. The HOA actually does approve a waiver of interest, but to hard costs, the, the HOA wasn't willing to do that because um, they were, obviously they have to eat those hard costs, but the interest and other things, they were willing to waive those. So there, there are, it was communication throughout the entire process with, with Red Rock, and, and so there was no re request for a payment plan. She's attempting to short sell, and her request is to, to do a waiver. Um, those aren't things that should prevent the sale from going forward. Obviously, there was communication there. Um, they, he just admitted that there was no, that the payment was actually made in October, so that um, you know, Red Rock's ledgers are accurate to that point. The, the final thing is the, he talked about the screenshot from the ombudsman. I, I don't know if that's been authenticated, but it's just a screenshot. Um, the HOA has a right to foreclose non-judicially. Um, the ombudsman can't just make a note in its computer that a sale is canceled and not communicate that to the HOA and have, you know, and cause conflict with, with the sale. There's nothing in the recorded documents that cancel the sale or rescind the notice of sale. It's a valid notice of sale, and the sale goes forward, Your Honor. Okay. We've got a couple questions for all the different parties, okay? Real quickly. First off, I want to make sure we're dealing with the operative pleading in this case, because as pointed <coughs> out in the footnote, there was a motion to amend that was granted. Yes, Your Honor. But that new pleading was never filed. So we're... Right? Pardon? The order was never... As far as I've seen, last time I looked, the order was never filed and the pleading was never filed. And it's our position that at this point it's too late. That hearing was a long time ago. Right. I'm just trying to make sure everyone's... This is the operative pleading. 
it is issue. Already, it doesn't change any, any of the facts. It just, it just at the time that Ms. Tobin filed her cross-claim and counter-claims, she didn't have counsel. So we just, um, and I thought it was filed, so I'll, I'll double check it on because I thought it was. I'll, I'll double check it on. Well, if I, um, the record is what the record is. Yes. The court's just being. I, I would agree that I don't believe it's been filed, Your Honor. Uh, the issue for the HOA is I think that the claim was still in the prior pleading. And so for us to wait for it to be filed, it would have prejudiced my client to not be able to file this motion on time. So, you know, whether it's addressing the, the prior claim or the or the <coughs> amended complaint, I think, you know, our motion is still valid today. Thank you. Well, the court's question was just making sure, I'm sure all parties can appreciate. And this, the amended complaint does not change the claim. Well, the amended complaint doesn't exist. If, unless somebody is telling me that where the court wants to make sure, the court appreciates that sometimes pleadings could possibly have gotten filed in an incorrect case by somebody putting an incorrect case number, okay? And I wouldn't know because the court can't guess if somebody put an incorrect case number on a case. I'm sure you can appreciate that, right? Okay? Can't go on a fishing expedition and look in every single case. There'd be no way to find it, okay? So the way to do address that issue is just to confirm that all parties agree that the operative pleading at issue is the last <coughs> operative pleading because the court does see that there was a request and a motion to amend. The court doesn't see that there is any order. The court doesn't see that there's any pleading any order or any notice of entry of order or any substantive pleading thereafter. But once again, it would be the party's responsibility, whether unrepresented through an individual or once represented through their counsel, to ensure that all documents are appropriately filed in the appropriate case, all orders are appropriately filed in the appropriate case, all notice of entry of orders, etc. So just making sure nobody's contending that they've filed it and they've inadvertently filed it in the wrong case or something like that. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. So looking at where we're at. Okay, that was the first question the court had. The second question the court had is, are the parties familiar with Resources Group versus Nevada Association Services, which came down on March 14, 2019, 135 Nevada Advanced Op 8 from the Nevada Supreme Court, and do the parties, since that's after the pleadings had closed, but since it's a Nevada Supreme Court case, are any of the parties contending that the court should or should not be taking that case into account? Are the parties maybe have to be read the case, so maybe nobody has a position? I haven't read it yet, Your Honor. Nor have I, Your Honor. I've read it, but to the extent it affects our joinder, I think it, we can address it at the time of hearing on our motion for summary judgment. Okay. Well, since it's only a joined party and saying it needs to be deferred to a different, then the court's not going to address that case, although what it says is what it says in its current case law, so the court's not in any way saying it's not taking into account the current case law, but since nobody's requesting the court to specifically address it, then the court's not going to specifically address it, although the analysis set for that therein is applicable case law that the court has to follow. Okay. So, the last question the court has is, do I have authentication of that screenshot? Because I looked through the opposition, I didn't, well, I saw that there was an affidavit, I didn't see any authentication from the ombudsman's office or anything like that. So I saw it was a screenshot, but I didn't see. Is there anything that authenticates that from an entity that can authenticate it? Well, Your Honor, it's a screenshot taken by Ms. Tobin, so she can authenticate that it's a true and correct copy of the screenshot itself, and the screen, I mean, and, and. I apologize. Ms. Tobin got that as a, a public records request from the ombudsman it's himself. Do I have that anywhere in the pleadings before me that that's the case? I looked through this. I didn't I see that. I don't have it, Your Honor, no. I can provide. In the pleadings before the court, that's why I, I can only no, look at the pleadings before the court. That's why I'm asking. I didn't see that. That's why I was asking. So I need to know whether I can take it into account as evidence under NRCP 56 or not, but I can't. Okay. So 
looking at what I can take into account, and the court's going to have to grant the motion for summary judgment. The court grants cross defendant Sun City Anthem's uh, motion for summary judgment. The court, looking at the undisputed facts, finds that as a matter of law that there has not that the processes for purposes of the narrow issue in the HOA's motion for summary judgment um, with regards to the claims asserted, and I'm looking at the March 7th stipulation of the parties to conform the caption, so I'm looking that that is the operative stipulation of the correct caption, and looking at the operative cross-claim in this regard, that you all have agreed is the one the court's supposed to be looking at, um, that the claims of Ms. Tobin vis-a-vis -vis the HOA, the movement in this case, Sun City Anthem Community Association, she, whereas Sun City Anthem has met their burden um, under Rule 56, Ms. Tobin has not met her burden in response to raise a material issue of fact in dispute that all the notices and the procedures and processes required by law were not followed. Um, even if the court, and there's two bases for that, one would be looking at the evidence presented the court doesn't see that looking at the okay? Even if the court, and that would be without taking into consideration the screenshot, okay? Because the court shouldn't take that into account because it's not appropriately authenticated as evidence under NRCP 56. Even if in light of the statement that that was pursuant to a public records request, the court were to take judicial notice of that based on the representation, that still wouldn't change the court's um, viewpoint. So that's two alternative bases even if I'm taking into account. Because a screenshot is not saying that that screenshot was in effect and noticed at the time of versus just an interpretation of an ombudsman as something that was filed after the fact. It's not saying that it was in effect at the time of the notice sales that took place. And looking at the totality of the evidence the court taking into account, somebody acknowledges she was behind on her payments, acknowledged that the, I mean, the notices were sent. Um, well, I appreciate that after the fact, there's a assertion that the cross claimant asserts that there wasn't unpaid balances, but looking at the contemporaneous documentation that has been located, it shows that there was unpaid balances, shows that the notices were properly sent in accordance with law, and so therefore be appropriate. Adopting the undisputed um, facts set forth in the motion and the reply, the court grants the motion for summary judgment. It is so ordered. The court's going to ask for detailed findings of fact, whose law to be presented by the movement, um, and the court grants not only obviously the motion, but the joinder there too, only to the extent the joinder relates to the HOA's claim, not in any way in matters that are not yet before the court. It is so ordered. Do you need 10 days or do you need more than 10 days, counsel? Uh, two days would be fine, Your Honor. I had a question about whether or not you would like to have in the order that the caption should be amended further now that the HOA is out of the case. You can't on this order. This order has to have the HOA in the caption. After the order's entered, we can do it. We can enter into stipulation further reforming the caption. Yeah, right, right. You've got to. This order's got to have you in it. Otherwise, it's not going to be effective. Okay. You won't, you won't, you're on. Right. You won't be out of it until after you file your notice of entry of order. So, I do need it. But thank you so much for asking. But I do need you in the caption. At the time you submit the order, do make sure it circulates to all parties and provide it back to the court. Request ED star seven point two one. We appreciate your time. Thank you so very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. John, I have one question, Your Honor. On, on the uh, screenshot, Your Honor. I'm on sorry? The, on the screenshot, I have one question, Your Honor. Does the court have a question as to when that was created or when it was? Did, did you say, Your Honor? The first or, thing is it's not a, it doesn't meet NRCP 56 standard, so it shouldn't be considered as evidence. That was the alternative one, okay? So it would be granted that even taking into account based on your client's representation to you as communicated to the court that that was provided pursuant to a public records request, it still would not be sufficient to establish a material issue of fact in dispute to overcome the evidence presented by the movement. The joinder joined, but it's really it's the movement's evidence, okay, and to overcome that they have met their burden under Rule 56, okay? And I will include all of that in the order. I do appreciate it. Thank you so very much. So, next column in 10 o'clock ish uh, Estrada versus Las Vegas Racquetball Club, 7457.